Hello folks, it's Blue here with a From the Depths Basics tutorial. I have had this one for a while, but always had trouble recording it. But I finally managed to get it working, so I'm going to do a tutorial series. I'm going to start off with the real bare basics of building ships and the menus themselves. Now for the menus, very simple. There's your character. Not going to go into that. I'll go into that during a different one because it doesn't tell you how to do anything major. There's your options. Build mode. Gameplay field of view and all this stuff. This one's fun because you can fix the set the weather. Like if you want it to be really rainy and stormy or high waves, it's pretty fun to mess with the settings in that menu. Your video options for your resolution. Your sound settings. Not sure why it had the music off. Then your controls are here. Vehicle controls here. Your HUD here. Then that's about the developer. Now back on to the next thing. Single player. This gives you a few options. You've got your story mode, your campaign, your creative mode, and your knowledge base. Not going to go into campaign or story mode, as that is not the purpose of this video. That will be a separate video if I decide to get into the campaign or story stuff. I personally have never tried it, so no guarantees on a tutorial relating to campaign or story. Now there are two things in the creative segment. Qualification testing and vehicle designer. Qualification testing is just that stuff gets shot at your thing to see how well it performs. Not gonna go into that, other than for a bare, bare basics, you would select your vehicle, it always just say it's the abyss, add the abyss to the test set, then test setup, target is at sea level, and then you just click to begin the test, give it a second, then you just click to free look, and there you go. It'll, you'll, the enemy will ship will start shooting at you. Well, actually, the enemy orb, because they don't have a ship. It's just an orb that shoots at you. And that's really all there is to this one. It shoots lasers, missiles, regular cannon shots, like there. Not much to go over. And, again, not the purpose of this video. So, just thought I would give you a bare basics of that one. Back to the main menu. Single player, vehicle designer. Now there are a couple of options here. I'm not familiar with the Four Seasons Missile Test Facility. Never actually used that one, or the Bench Marker, or the Space Design. Well, the Space Designer is just the standard designer, except you start off in space. I'm just going to show the basic vanilla designer because that's, again, basics. I'll go into other de de designer tutorials and such another time. This is really going to be bare, bare basics with the bit stock control setup. Now, down at the bottom, most of this stuff down there, meaningless for basics. We'll pretend I don't have any weapon because you wouldn't just starting out. Now controls when you're just moving around are very simple. WASD and space. That's all. If you want to go into a free look, you can press the tab key. That's that's your default guy. Now just quick to show you how you would change him, you'd go to your character sheet then your avatar and you could swap it over to Rambot. I personally prefer the Scuttlebutt, so Scuttlebot I mean, and as such I use him. Now for basic building. You start off in the designer right here with this little ship. Very basic, it's just a plank of wood, basically. To enter the build menu, you press B. Then it swaps you into this. Now this is using the mouse based menu. I personally have not used the mouse based build, so I'm not going to be going over that. I personally use the keyboard based build, I find it easier. 
Now this is fairly simple. WASD, move your block. Very helpful little tool tips. So you almost don't need me to tell you, but I'm gonna anyway, because that's the purpose of the video. So I'll go over this basic. You move your mouse to decide on which direction the block goes. Like if you want to go forward, you cl point the thing forward like that, so Lara points forward. If you want to go up, then over, then across, like I just did there, you just point the mouse in the direction you want to go. Like so. That is also using the arrow keys as a little bit of a buffer though, admittedly. Then underwater, not much to say, same as above. Now for your inventory, in which you swap the uh, converters. What? Hmm. More. There we go. Not sure, this is new. Apparently this is new, never seen this before. I'm going to the absolute maximum because that's the whole point, is to show stuff. I'll go over what each of these things do individually another time in another video. But I'll, So I'll just go over the basics of making a ship that moves. Now you'll start off with needing an engine. You start off with the engine block right here. There is a prefab engine that's fully done. But I'm going to just build it, because that's, again, the point of the video is to show how stuff is made. Then you need your crankshaft. Right here, just left click, you got your crankshaft, and you build it. Oh, one thing I forgot to go over was how to delete a block. Just right click, like so. See, I just removed the block, that's all. Right click, there's a little sound, pop sound, and that's it. And your block is deleted. Now. Next up, you'll will, you will need cylinders for your engine. I personally put them in this configuration because there are other things you're going to need to put in. Now, once you have your cylinders in, you have nearly a full engine. Next up, you have two options. You can either put engines on a fuel tank for the engine, but that requires extra parts, or you can just go over to your resources, select your fuel storage tank, put a couple down, and there you go. You have a working engine. But I'm going to show how to do the full engine because I count a uh, full engine as being part of the basics. Now for engines, once you've got your crankshafts and your cylinders, you will need a carburetor. You just put the carburetors beside your cylinders like so now I don't quite have quite as much room as I'm gonna want for this build so I'm just gonna expand this out and put some more wood to prevent the whole thing from sinking like a rock which is actually a perfect way to show one other function which is what the N button does N makes it mirror so for example I'm right here it mirrors what I do on the one corner and does it to the other corner. It's very useful if you want to keep your ship symmetrical. So it just does it for you and you don't have to go back and forth between two sides trying to exactly match what you've done already. Oh, and I very sorry forgot to mention that space can raises your block upward by one block increments and Alt brings it down. So space up, Alt down. Okay, now back to the engines. Once you've got your cylinders in and your carburetors, you're gonna want a supercharger. You pull out your supercharger and put them beside or above the carburetors. I personally put them aside in this case. Beside, sorry, in this case. Then you'll want, once you've got all that in, your engine's own fuel tank. You put these on top of or beside your carburetors, which I have just done, put them on top. Then, to completely finish your engine, you just have to put some exhaust in. 
This will maximize your power and fuel efficiency for your engine. And because I had mirror on, I just finished that in a split. Okay. Now there are a few more complicated bits. I'll go into this another... Actually, I'll just go into it because there's only one block. I'm not going into the electric stuff. I've never used it and don't know how. But then you have here the left, right, and up connector. I'm not 100% how this one works, but I think you just put it here and it connects to your crankshaft. That's what would suggest anyway. Don't know a ton about that, but thought I should note it because it is a thing relating to the engines. And I couldn't do a full engine tutorial because it would be one block I was talking about. It would just be pointless. So now you have your engine in. You're only a few steps away from having a completely moving ship. Now we go to the water tab. We need to put in a couple of propellers, like so. Just go under the water level and put a few down. I tend to put three or more depending on the ship. Once you've done that, you still need more, you're not quite done. You need to pull out... You don't have to do this one, but I recommend you put a couple air pumps in the little pockets here, just to prevent water from getting in. Then, you have to go to your... Where is it? Rudders. And just, again, put a couple below water level so you can turn your boat. Then, once you're done there, there's only one step left between you and a sailing ship. You need to go to con the control tab and select the vehicle controller. Personally, I use the ship's wheel if it's a ship, but you could just use the vehicle control. Now, your ship has been completed. Now, I'll go over how to actually drive said ship. Or, at, in this case, sail, but whatever. Okay, you just stand there. I recommend you go into third person for this, or the free cam. You have to enable third person under gameplay, right there. Forgot to note that, sorry. Though it's a bit of an awkward camera, I personally recommend just using free camera. Now, for a boat, controls are very simple, only a few keys. You use the U key, to go forward. Whoa, 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 whoa! Okay, clearly messed up somewhere when I made this ship. Because it shouldn't have flipped like that. I think I have too much power on not enough weight. So, Gil and I clearly messed up somewhere. Let me just swap the ship we're using out for a, pre for a ship I have already built that I built a while back. Here we go. Me. load this ship. It's huge, I know, but the basics are still the same. This one is enabled for AI, but it, that you can still sail it in the same way as you'd sail any other ship. Just give this a second to f finish floating to the top. Oh, we appear to have gotten a collision. Okay. Now just hop into the... Ah, come on, back out. There we go. Hop into the chair. Now, there are weapons on this ship, I will go into that in a minute, but first, to show how to control a ship. U makes you go forward. Admittedly, not all that rapidly in this case, because this is a big ship. It's not very fast. J makes you slow down and or go into reverse, depending on if you're moving previously or not. T and G, at the same time, stop the ship completely. H will make you go left. 
like so, and K makes you go right. Now I'll just first, before showing anything else, get out of the way of that ship. I'll show the weapons. This, it, this thing's equipped with torpedoes. I'm a little bit more of a special weapon, but I'll show it anyway. There you, there are your tor torpedoes. They go point wherever you tell them to. So if you point directly at an, a, another ship, they will try to go to that ship. If at all possible. Like right there, it hit the ship. I'll just stop this ship and go over some other weapons. Now, the reason I'm able to fire all of those things at once is because of this little thingy... No, not that one. This one. This little thingy right here, which you would place right next to wherever you are when you sail. That item is under control. It is the fire control computer. You just place that next to you and you can control all of the weapons on the ship from one given place. Otherwise, you have to be standing right next to a given weapon to uh, hit fire it. But with that, if you're on one end of the ship and the thing you're trying to fire is on the other, you can still shoot it if you have the fire control computer. Now... I'll show a couple of the other more basic weapons. I will go into custom cannons and custom missiles in a later tutorial because that's getting more complicated and a little much for my basics video. You just go back into your build menu, press E, and go over to simple weapons. Now you have your RAM, which is just what it, it does what it says. You use it to ram into things. You have your small, large, and auto cannons. I'll show these. I'll just place one next to the other and so you can see them in a more easy to watch bit. Now out of the build menu, if you go over to your small cannon, you'll see once you're standing near it, all the cannons move in relation to how far and in what direction they are able to move. So, like, if you're pointing all the way to one side, they won't be able to do it. Like, see, it gets stuck right there at that angle. And it does the same for upwards and downwards. They can only go so far. Now, the small cannon does less damage, but can shoot far more frequently. The large cannon does more damage, has less aiming capability than the small cannon, but also reloads much slower. So basically, between small and large cannon, it is do you want more, ac more ability to aim and lower damage with a higher reload, or do you want higher damage with less ability to aim and slower reload? So it's basically, do you want nimble, or do you want powerful? Then you have your auto cannon which is really not practical just sitting on something like this. It just shoots in a straight line. It doesn't go in any direction, up, down, left, right, nothing. You fire it, and it fires a small group of shots, like so. Then, going into some other weapons, because I have pretty much run out my options on those. I'll just show them over here because that's where it put me. You have your torpedo launcher, which I've just shown. The harpoon gun, which really isn't very practical. The laser. I'll just I'll spawn that in. You can go build custom lasers as well. We'll go. I'll go into that at another point. The drill, again, that's more complicated as well. I'll have like an advanced weapons segment that I'll slap the custom cannons, the missiles, the torpedoes, and the drills into. Then you have your harpoon gun. I'll just spawn that. Then you have your seeking missile launcher, but I have to show that with the help of an AI, so I will get to that one later in the video. Now once you're he here, you will see the harpoon gun can turn in directions, up, down, left, right, with about the same aiming range 
as the small cannon. You press control to fire it, and it fires a harpoon. And there was the laser getting going. With a nice ear piercing sound for ya. Now, this does a lot of damage, but has no aiming capability whatsoever. I will, in this video, show a way around that, however. Now, for the Seeking Missile Launcher, I will do the method I was talking about to make these guns, like the laser and the harpoon gun, and the, uh, sorry, and the auto cannon more effective. I will show using that method. So, first, first you go into your build menu, E. Now you go into, I believe, hang on, which spot was it? Ah, here we go, new object. Then you want your spin and turn block. Oh wait, no, the 360 turret. I don't really know which is better, so I tend to just use the stock one. Now once you've got your turret, it swaps your menu to on top of the turret. So you, if you tried to place something, say, right here, you wouldn't be able to, because you're on top of the turret. Now, there are a couple of ways to do this. I personally tend to put, like, a wood block on top, then place my weapon. Now, that weapon I was speaking of is the, the Seeking Missile Launcher. Now you see that the turret is moving. Out of line with the... Uh, other bit. Very sorry, I think I messed that up. Let me just get back over there. Oh, and pressing the uh, left bra right bracket key puts you over into the editing the turret menu. Now, silly me, forgot to actually ensure that the thing would point in the correct direction. And now it does. Very sorry about that. And now... Because I need something to shoot at to show this, I will spawn in an enemy. I'll just quit. This one's very self-explanatory, nothing really much I'd have to say here. You click your faction, and you click your plane, and whatever, and you're done. Nothing really much to say about it, so I'll just spawn in something. Now there it is. That's probably way bigger than I should have spawned in, but whatever. Now we need to wait for this to get into range. Because the missile launcher does have a range that it needs to be at. Don't worry, it's making a pass. Oh come on, make the pass already. Are you in range yet? Yeah. Boom. Then it's now it is locked on to that ship. It will not stop going after it until it runs out of fuel. The way to know that is when it is locked on is when the red laser turns green. Very simple. Oh, missile missed, which I must say was predicted. I really did think it would miss. And now that that is done, let me just go back into my build menu, back to the turret, and I'll just show using a different weapon. Oh, we're getting shot at. I'll just show using the laser. Ho! Oh. Okay, I died. Respawning. Okay, now back to my ship. Hover along to my ship. Now that the explosion appears to have caused major damage and a glitch. 
So let me just respawn that laser in. Now I'll have it turn in the direction of the enemy. Come on, turn in that direction. Come on. Uh, what is it doing? Oh, I messed it up again. Sorry. Keep forgetting to place this in so that the thing shoots in the direction the ship turns. Now, isn't that the same direction it was at? Yes, yes, it was. There we go. Now it's actually in the right place. So it can actually shoot at something. Okay, now point in the direction of the enemy ship. Tell it to open fire. Now, if that had actually hit, you'd have seen damage done. So, to actually show a hit, let me spawn in something a little easier to hit. Spawn in a few sea vipers, right over there. Wait for the thing to turn. Wow, this thing has a low range. Because I think this... Oh no, it didn't miss, it hit. It actually did some good damage, I think. It sure looks like it did good damage. Good. Thing is down. Now let me just think if I missed any extreme basics topics. Because I do not think I did. Let me just check the build menu and make sure I have not missed anything. Not going to go into air stuff because I suck at building stuff that flies gone over the engines, the resources mean effectively nothing, and I know very little about them, because I don't do the campaign. Nothing here to talk about in the basics, or here, or here, or here. That will be in another video, another video, another video. Definitely another video. Oh, I'll just quickly mention the prefabs, then we're done. The prefabs are things completely built by the creator of the game, and you can spawn them in. You can make your own prefab by just saying name of it with height and length in blocks, but to show how it works, you'll just click one. Just say we want the anti-air battery. Then you select, you double click, whoa. Then it spawned in when I didn't actually tell it to. Whoopsie, I accidentally clicked when I didn't intend to. Then you have your anti-air battery, which fires, I presume, missiles. Yes, missiles. Wait, no. Oh, double A battery. That's that's a mod thing. Sorry, <laughs> got that mixed up with an anti-air battery. E. Then we'll just use the basic heat-seeking missile prefab. Now you just go over here spawn it in while orienting it in the right direction then you're done you go out of your build menu and you have a working prefabbed item now you're not gonna I'll go into what missiles do another time but because it's there the heat seeking missile goes after whatever it senses at the as the hottest thing it can so like if that plane that's been shooting at us had been close it would have gone after that Actually, it's about to make a pass, so I may as well show how that works. Wait for it. And come on, get close. Little lag. Fire! And it completely ignored it. Ah, well, whatever. Well, I don't think I have anything left to cover as basics. 
So I'm going to end it here. Make sure to come back eventually, um, probably sometime this week or next week, for my bit on the uh, higher level stuff, like building custom weapons instead of just using stock. And I will do a video on bit making the AI work for you. Thank you for watching, folks. Bye-bye!